All right, guys, now we're going to take a look at this concept of manifest destiny coined by John L. L. Sullivan in 1845, the idea that we're supposed to control all this land from the Atlantic to the Pacific. But we needed it for a growing population. Now, 1821 helped begin this with the Santa Fe Trail, an 800-mile-long trade route for American products between Independence, Missouri, and Santa Fe, New Mexico. But you also have these mountain men out in the Pacific Northwest in Oregon, discovering the South Pass through the Rocky Mountains, which opens up the Northwest for settlers. They are the ones who are going to supply John Jacob Astor with all of the beaver fur he needs to provide the fur necessary for the beaver hats, which was the popular thing in the eastern part of the United States and makes him the wealthiest man in America. Lewis and Clark's heroic expedition through the Rockies uncovers a route to the West's most valuable commodity, beaver. Their pelts frontier hard currency, traded by Native Americans for guns, knives, salt, and they're a high fashion luxury for the rich. They've been hunted nearly to extinction in Europe. Here, they're everywhere, millions of them. The freezing Rocky Mountain water makes the beaver pelts thicker, warmer, more expensive than other fur. New iron traps from New York foundries make catching them easier. Baited with the beaver's own scent glands, they're drawn to their death. October, 1823. 300 eager trappers roam the Rockies, searching for their fortune. One in five won't make it out alive. Trapping's harsh, hungry work. 6,000 calories a day are needed to survive the extreme conditions, three times what we eat today. Jedediah Smith is the greatest hunter of all, 24 years old. He walks up to 1,000 miles in the Rockies each year, traps 600 pelts in a season, three years' pay back east. Smith is a devout Christian, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke. Bible and gun, a constant companion. He's smart, works with the Native Americans. The Crow show him ancient shortcuts, sell him horses, nurse his sick men back to health. Wilderness survival. For millennia, the tribes of North America have adapted themselves to live in any condition from arid plains to harsh mountain pass. Jed Smith uses their knowledge and his skill to open up the West for vast fur trapping profits. He'll die a rich man, but today he's not the hunter. He's the hunted. Jed Smith's friend, James Kleiman, writes, The grizzly did not hesitate, springing on the captain, breaking his ribs and cutting his head. This gave us a lesson on the character of the grizzly, which we did not forget. The grizzly bear is the most deadly frontier beast. 100,000 of these terrifying killers are on the prowl. Up to 10 feet tall, 1,000 pounds. They don't fear man, yet. Today, there are fewer than 2,000 grizzlies in the Rockies. Halfway to death, 
Jed Smith's right-hand man, James Kleiman, stitches his scalp and ear back to his head. I put in my needle, stitching it through and through and over and over, laying the lacerated parts together as nice as I could. There is an amazing sense of, of confidence that's part of that American uh, spirit that doesn't um, even think about failing. Jed Smith pushes on. This is the new character of America. Frontier grit, rugged individualism, survival. And something else survives too. The trails he forges become settler paths, wagon trains, roads, and today, Interstate 15. But it's when the beaver fur is gone, we have to see new reasons to head west. The people who really stayed in the West at the early stages were the missionaries like Marcus and Narcissa Whitman, who helped establish a mission in the Pacific Northwest with the Cayuse Indians. Unfortunately, they didn't really trust the Indians, and in 1847, with an outbreak of measles, the Whitmans were blamed for it, and they were actually killed along with 12 other settlers. But their reports of Oregon helped open up the Oregon Trail, and people would take this huge five-month journey after leaving in the spring from Missouri all the way to Oregon. They couldn't travel through the winter. It was a very risky thing to uh, go through the Rocky Mountains in the case of a blizzard. But 50,000 people actually made this journey and really helped blaze the openings of the West. Uh, they would leave stuff on the side of the roads when their things got too heavy for their animals there, but they managed to make it. Thousands of men, women, and children. Riding, walking, Pushing. They're heading for a new life 2,000 miles away. It was a land of opportunity. You can make of yourself what you want. You're only held back by your own desires. Germans, Belgians, French, Catholics, Presbyterians, Mormons. One of the world's great mass migrations begins. The pioneer spirit has moved on. In this colossal migration to Oregon and California, America will finally define its character. It's the American dream. Then, as now, the people want an already good life to get better. They can walk 10 miles a day for up to six months straight. Some go through 10 pairs of boots each. Half are children. En route, one in five of the women are pregnant. But these aren't America's poor. Families sell farms, save for five years to join the exodus, risking it all. I think if there is one episode that encapsulates the American spirit, I think it is probably the move west. Whip those mules and horses and cross those rivers and cross over those mountains to the unknown and say, I'm leaving everything behind. I'm leaving everything that I know behind to reinvent myself. A wagon and oxen cost minimum $5,000 in today's money. but it buys a complete life support machine. The wagons carry a precious cargo, a thousand pounds of supplies, and a grub stake for your journey, your entire new life in the West. The pioneering spirit is ingenious, essential drinking water captured from rain on the wagon canvas. Even the oxen's dung is fuel for fires. And like today, there are tolls. Native Americans charge $10 for road and $100 for river crossings in modern money. But the greatest toll of all, human lives. In all, 
20,000 Americans will die reaching the West. Ten graves for every mile. Uh, the downside was that life in the West was pretty tough. Uh, it was really, really difficult to make a go of it working with just hand tools. Uh, women, however, did benefit from this because they experienced a greater degree of freedom because it was necessary for them to be able to help make these farms successful. And as a result, they were rewarded in states like Wyoming, which gave women the right to vote in 1869. The Native Americans sort of had a mixed relationship with the whites. In the southern part of Oregon, things were pretty friendly. There was a lot of trade going on. Northern part of the Oregon country, uh, a lot of violent outbreaks and uprisings, and it actually took the intervention of the U.S. government and forcing these Native Americans to sign treaties that would give up their land. Thanks again, guys, for listening. Hopefully we took good notes, and we'll see you tomorrow.